is it possible that one third of the um, uh, inhabitants from Peru, uh, from Peru in Lima uh, live in a place where, in a desert where there is no water, where there is no better place to live? There's work. That's why people go to cities. Poor people always tend to go to cities. That's why cities grow, because they're looking for work. There's, a, there's an interconnection between lots of problems, the distribution of wealth, the, the, the environmental challenges, and uh, democratic solutions. You know, these, these things are all together. You can't just say, okay, we have to, we have to fight climate change. You have to think that, that how can we, how can we share this world together in a very much more equal way. Cities tend to grow because there's no work. Farmers don't get enough money for their products. And that's what drives them to, to cities. It's, uh, I'm convinced of that. There is, to talk about solutions, you have to talk about a lot of things. We still got a lot of things to do. Okay, and I agree with you. So I have a question from Sunday 476 for you. It says, Hans, Hans Fels saw a great amount of the world already. Do the items of this series for a director constitute a landmark? And if so, why? Well, so we have seen a lot, a lot of the world. Yeah. And what you have done here, does it, uh, is, are they, what you do here is uh, a landmark for you, and why? Well, yeah, well, first of all, also, because I'm getting older, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm only one year younger than this uh, pirate here. <laughs> And uh, this is the first time I get a chance to sort of travel constantly. You know, you, you, you don't stop traveling. And you don't stop to be amazed. I, I'm also a lot of more optimistic about the world. It's bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, much bigger. It's much bigger. You know, we are spending weeks and weeks and weeks on this ocean. And we, we started to think in not in hours or minutes, but in 24 hours, in days. And we have seen one boat in uh, seven days. The world is very big and it's beautiful, and it's actually also quite empty, and, and it should be space enough for everybody. But as Darwin himself says, that looking at maps of the Pacific, even the globe, gives you no idea at all because the little tiny specks of land, little grains of sand, as he said, uh, they have a long name attached to them. The, the Pacific's are full of writing, uh, meaning nothing. And now I realize that it, it, it really is half the planet. Yeah, and, and, and just to, to finish the, the, the question, you know, is that I am... I'm really amazed about this world. You know, I've been traveling mostly by airplanes, being dropped in this place and that place and that place. And suddenly, we have so much time to look. I mean, I think we could be broadcasting for hours, actually. We're broadcasting only 35 minutes. But, uh, well, I have here some comments about uh, the story you just told, uh, Redmond, from a Tire Lire. Thanks, Redmond, for your lovely story. That text says, fantastic new evolutionary proposal by Redmond. Now on the web, on the webcam. And then somebody says, well, Gerb says, there were some scary moments. I thought Redmond was going to discuss his nude shower scene. <laughs> well, and, certainly uh, not. It was all Hans's idea, though. Okay, this, uh, uh, we are being uh, for a long time right here, so I have one last question which is still about uh, Lima, about uh, water in Lima. And then we close our Twitter session for, for today. Um, uh, Redmond, is it possible to invest in water treatment in Lima? Something like sewage treatment or so? Seawater treatment, yes. Yes, all these cities that are near the coast. And technically, it's easy. Uh, you can set up huge plums. It's just where you find the money for it. At least, I, I'm just quoting Tim Flannery. But uh, I think every city will have to have one. There'll have to be even London um, and Amsterdam. 
there just isn't going to be enough fresh water. But there's too much seawater going to be. How much does a water can cost in comparison to jet fighters? I should think it's probably the same. No, five jet fighters. I just don't know. We have the money. We need to find them. We need to yeah. allocate the money. Okay. Uh, well, we have so many more questions coming. One also about the C3, something on Wikipedia. We'll have a look, and I will reply the answers later on. So I thank you very much for your, yeah, for being there, for sending your questions. I thank you. I thank Redmond very much for being here, and Hans. Oh, for it's terrible. Questions. We've got so to thank stop. you, guys. Have a nice evening. Don't we go on a bit more? <laughs> you want to go on more? Yeah, I like it here a lot. You want yeah, to? One yeah. more nice question. One more nice question. Let's see. Um, for can someone put Redmond under the shower again? Sure. I will. I do it actually every night because he <laughs> never goes voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the show we discussed it while we were filming. You had your swimming content. <laughs> Okay, I believe uh, the new president. It's funny how people think that you were naked. You know what? You only saw your head oh. and your feet. Listen. The rest is in the mind of the beholder. Yeah. There, yeah, they've all been twittering in to say how well endowed I am. <laughs> oh, there's somebody's Carol. Carol, uh, Carol Diel Zutte says, I believe the new president of Peru is starting a lot of projects like uh, Water for Everyone. Did you Did you see anything about it? When you were in uh, Peru? Well, we were not in Peru. Uh, well, no, I didn't. We we were, but in the harbour and then just into Lima. Sarah Lima. was in Peru. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, so she's the one to ask. But she, they should ask because Sarah will be twitching in one or two weeks' time, right? Yeah, when yeah. she's there, uh, we hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question uh, is the from again from Carol D. L. Zuto. Last question. Is the problem of globalization and therefore urbanization a huge factor in the water problems in Lima? Well, yes, is the answer to that one. But I wish I knew more about it. But then we're actually sailing towards Tim Flannery, who's waiting in Sydney. He'd be able to tell you just like that, with figures. <laughs> okay, guys. So we'll wait for next week. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, do you mean when Sarah's there? Hmm? Where Sarah is there, you mean? Uh, Tim Flannery is there. I went in Flannery, I, yeah. in, in two and weeks. And in one week time we have a Twitter session, and in between we will not touch land. We'll still be on the sea. Yes. Yes, exactly. Amazing. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a nice evening, and uh, we see, well, we'll probably have another Twitter session with the uh, Clipper crew this week, so you see, you can follow again on Twitter on our site. And keep an eye on it, and uh, for sure, Sunday next week. So, thank you very much, and bye bye. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>